Well, we have a six hour old girl. Okay. That was just newly born. Nursery due to respiratory distress. She was born at 37 weeks of gestation via spontaneous vaginal delivery after induction of labor for preeclampsia. That means the mother was hypertensive. Well, at birth, the baby has not able to feed due to tachypnea since the birth. Birth weight is less than third percentile for gestational age. Temperature is slightly raised or maybe normal. You can say BP is normal for the age. Pulse oximetry 96% saturation on room air normal. The examination reveals a plethoric infant. Head is normal cephalic with an open and flat anterior fontanel. Card examination reveals tachycardia and no murmur. Pulmonary examination re reveals tachypnea. Breath sounds are clear. There is no retraction. Infant has no normal female infantile genitalia. Well, when you talk about chest x-ray, normal lungs, normal cardiac shadow. If you talk about complete blood count, hematocrit is increased. 71% normal is up to 65 with the upper limit. It has above the upper limit. Platelet and glucoside, they are the normal range. This is the reduced glucose. Most likely cause the patient symptoms are. The answer is E. polycythemia. So before I discuss the question, let me tell you something basic about neonatal polycythemia basic concept. It defined as hematocrit more than 65%. That is two standard deviation above the mean in neonates. In our case, it was 71%. Now, causes increased atheropoiesis from intrauterine hypoxia, maternal diabetes, hypertension or smoking. Mother may be having either diabetes, hypertension or smoking. Or even IUGR can again cause increased atheropoiesis. Well, atherocyte transfusion like delayed cord clamping or twin or twin transfusion. Genetic or metabolic disease like hypothyroid or hyperthyroid. That means thyroid disorder. So in such cases, thyroid function test should all be done. Trisomy 13, 18 and 21. How does these type of people, chica, children, they manifest? Maybe no symptom at all. Rudy skin, like in our patient, it was a plethoric. Hypoglycemia, yes, this is there in our patient also. Hyperbilirubinemia, respiratory distress, yes, our patient has tachypnea. Irritability, jitterness, or abdominal distension can be there. As far as treatment concerned, as per NICE guidelines, intravenous fluid, give glu IV glucose, or a partial exchange transfusion. With this background, or the basic concept, now we come to the question. Patient in our question has neonatal polycythemia. And the predisposing was maternal preeclampsia. Remember that due to placental dysfunction. The point I mentioned to you in the basic that maternal diabetes, hypertension or smoking that can cause polycythemia. This result in intrauterine hypoxia and growth restriction also. Other than a rudy or plethoric appearance, most neonates with the polycythemia are asymptomatic. Okay. Now, as the hematocrit level rises due to post-birth fluid shift, the increased blood viscosity may cause decreased blood flow to organs. Polycythemia itself can lead to increased blood viscosity. That lead to lethargy, irritability, and jitterness. This is all due to increased blood viscosity. In fact, in case of adult where we have polycythemia vera, okay. Uh, which, is a, which is a malignancy of the RBC series in adults, this leads to increased blood pressure. That it will increase BP because of uh, high viscosity in the blood because of increased RBC count. Now, severe symptom, respiratory distress, tachypnea. In our patient also, tachypnea is there. 
poor feeding the baby has not been able to feed due to tachypnea and cyanosis can be there. Increased RBC mass can lead to hypoglycemia. Definitely RBC are going to consume sugar. Hypocalcemia due to increased cellular intake can be there. Treatment is hydration by oral feed, glucose or containing parental fluid. That is the thing. We want to give more and more fluid to this type of newborns. Let's look into other options. Option A, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, what we write as CAH. is called by 21 hydroxylase deficiency, the most common cause of CAH. It can lead to hypoglycemia, ambiguous genitalia in the girls, the classical finding that uh, will point towards CAH. Other findings include dehydration, hyponatremia, hyperkalemia, virilization. It does not lead to polycythemia and infants are normal. Okay, like in our patient, uh, this, uh, this our patient is having normal genitalia. So this is not a case of CH. Cyanotic heart disease. Congenital cyanotic heart disease can present with cyanosis in newborn. Even without murmur, like transposition of the great vessel. Infant is, but in our patient, the infant is born with normal cardiac shadow, normal auscultation, and a high hematocrit, polycythemia is better diagnosis in, the, in our patient. What about option C, dehydration can cause elevated hematocrit due to hemoconcentration. But in the first two days of the life, dehydration is rare in term neonate as they are born with excess extracellular fluid. Though it is strong possibility, but not in this case because our child is only six hours old. Well, option D, glycogen storage disease, so-called type 1 or von Gericke disease is the most common GST. It presents with hypoglycemia in newborn. Our, our patient has hypoglycemia. They also have hepatomegaly and severe acidosis. And this is why. Stop the video, write down the answer. Why severe acidosis occur in these patients? Answer is due to, due to lactic acidosis. Polycythemia is not a feature of GST. So let me give you some basic concept about von Gricke disease type 1, severe fasting hypoglycemia, increased glycogen in the liver, blood lactate level are increased as I mentioned in the previous slide, dietary 2 acidosis. What type of acidosis is the metabolic acidosis with increased anion gap. Increased triglyceride, increased uric acid, gout, and hepatomegaly is a feature. Treatment as per NICE guidelines, frequent oral glucose and cornstarch, avoidance of fructose and galactose, and the basic problem in the, is due to impair gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis, the basic problem what happen in these patients. Golden line to remember, polycythemia is defined as hematocrit, more than 65 percent, more than 65 percent in term neonates. Risk factors include excessive transfusion, intrajoint hypoxia, maternal diabetes, or maternal hypertension, or smoking also. High blood viscosity limit the organ perfusion and can cause respiratory distress, hypoglycemia, and poor feeding. What is there is present in our patient also. Thank you very much.